Hey guys, Tech Fire, and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Glorious Mob D Minus, the little brother to the full size D. I have another one of these coming in black, and I'll be giving that one away. Originally, I was going to let the winner pick, but unfortunately, since this one broke, which I'll talk more about in just a second, I can only give away the black one. To enter, make sure you subscribe to the channel, click the Gleam link in the description, and let me know in the comments that you entered. Unfortunately, I think I can only ship to the UK, Europe, and USA, but comment your country in the description, and I'll have a look at shipping prices and see if I'll be able to get it to you. Without further ado, let's get into this. Just quickly before I talk about how I broke the mouse, in the box you get the mouse, tons of booklets and stickers and things like that from Glorious, as well as some bigger skates you can stick on and give the mouse more glide, which once again we'll talk about very shortly. Originally I was going to describe the build quality as poor but passable. It has lots of flex and creaks and things like that when you squeeze it, on the sides it's not too bad, but from the top it creaks and bends and the bottom plate has so much flex in it that it's absolutely ridiculous. And this is what my problem was. I wasn't even trying to film something. It was just while I was gaming, I was like, oh, how, how, how good is it then? Because it does seem, you know, I noticed when I took it out of the box, it did have this bit of flex. So I was squeezing it with a single hand, a bit like I am now, not putting much force at all. And what happened was, is it managed to bend enough that it dislodged the PCB from the little clips that hold it in place. And therefore the sensor came out of place and the mouse wouldn't work anymore. I think that is actually terrible that that has happened because like I said, while that is more force than you would put on while you're gaming, obviously, you have a flat hand, the bottom is flat. I think a mouse, especially when I'm paying 50 quid, should be a bit more solid than that. Luckily, I was able to remove the feet and undo the screws, take it apart and easily clip it back into place. Nothing was permanently damaged and this mouse would be as good as new with some replacement feet. However, currently they're not quite stuck down, you know, because I just restuck on the original feet. I was really disappointed by this because as you'll see from the rest of the view, the rest of the mouse is pretty good and Glorious has done a good job but that build quality I think, well like I said, if you're just using it like a normal person should do gaming, it won't break, however the fact that I managed to do that within just 20 minutes with minimal force I think is unacceptable. Since this is the smaller version of the Model D, it is obviously a small mouse. It's just 120mm long and 40mm tall at the highest point. It's 67mm wide at the back and 61mm at both the centre and the front. It's pretty obvious that the Model D- minus is the one you should go for if you have smaller hands, and if you have particularly large hands, I'd say, I don't know, 20, 22 centimetres long, or longer than that, then I would go with the Model D, but it does depend on your grip. For a bit of reference, my hands are 17cm by 8.5cm, which is pretty small. The mouse has a nice ergonomic shape, and it does mean that it is a right-handed mouse. I personally really liked it though, and it allowed me to use a relaxed claw grip really comfortably. It's also very well designed for palm grip, and for fingertip grip, I say it favours it the least, however you can still do it fairly comfortably. If you're a more aggressive claw again, it's not as great as a relaxed claw, but it is absolutely fine. Overall, I think the shape of this mouse is a great shape for fitting many different types of grips. Arguably, for those of you who are very serious about your aim, a semi-ambidextrous mouse is something a lot of people do prefer. But for the average user, I think this is really comfortable and I enjoyed using it for long periods of time. Being a small mouse and having a honeycomb design, it weighs just 61 grams, which is the same as the Mira S and Viper Mini. Obviously, this does make it feel much more agile, light, and is really nice to use. It allowed me to use a low sensitivity and still have maintain accuracy over fast flicks. The only issue is, somehow with the way they've done it, it does lead to the build quality issues I mentioned before. But apart from that, 61 grams is a really nice weight for a mouse and I really enjoyed using it. The cable is pretty good as far as cables included on a mouse goes. Obviously if you want to modify your cable there are much better ones you can get out there, but it reminds me a lot of the Razer Speedflex cable on the Razer Viper Mini. It definitely did the job and for most people will be absolutely fine. And once again like I said, if you want to modify it on these Model D minuses and just glorious mice in general, the cables are really easy to switch out if you want to get yourself a nice paracord or something like that. The Model D minus is an optical mouse that uses the Pixar PMW 3360 sensor. It has a 1000Hz polling rate and a huge DPI of up to 12000. I found the sense to be very accurate, precise and responsive. 
It was very nice to use, and overall it was a very good experience. Glorious definitely made a good choice using this sensor. It tracked up to a height of just four playing cards, which is a relatively low lift-off distance, and exactly what I'd expect for this sensor, since the Mira S has the same one. The sensor was complemented by the feet. You get four feet in each corner, and then you can stick on the two extra PTFE G-skates to give yourself that extra surface area for even more glide. The feet, as far as included on a mouse go, were very good. Obviously, you can easily swap them out and modify them if that's something you'd like to do, but I think they were very good anyway. I would have liked to see Glorious include extra feet in the box though as a replacement, as for people who just break their feet, they wear out over time, or if you're like me and you had to disassemble the mouse, I now need new feet as they didn't stick back on quite the way they should have, and it doesn't cost manufacturers a lot to do this. I really like the primary mouse clicks, they use Omron switches rated at 20 million clicks, they had no issues with pre-travel or anything like that, they felt very responsive, there was no sponginess or stickiness, and ultimately I think Glorious has done a really good job, they have not much wobble to them or anything like that. If you're interested, here's a little sound test of the left click and the right click. The scroll wheel was also very nice. It has a rubber feel to it, it's not too noisy, it didn't feel ratchety or anything, and it scrolls distinctly between each step. I never double scrolled or anything like that. Once again, I was a big fan of the scroll wheel. It was plenty wide enough as well and just the right size for me. I just love the height and the way it was implemented. There's something about it that I really like this scroll wheel. Here's a little sound test, if you're interested again, of the scroll wheel scrolling and clicking. The side buttons were also very well done. They were large, smooth and easy to find, but also not disruptive if you're choosing not to use them. I personally had no issues with them and thought they took the right amount of force to press. For those of you interested, here's a sound test of the front side button and the rear side button. Glorious has obviously done a great job with this mouse in terms of the way it looks and the lighting. It does look very cool with the two RGB lines, the scroll wheel lights up and the way the lights just glow out the honeycomb, especially at night, does look really cool and I am a big fan of it. The software was also really easy to use, you could customise all the DPIs, you even have a DPI indicating light on the bottom, you can store up to three onboard profiles and change loads of settings including even increase the lift off distance if that's something you'd want to do. So I have no complaints there, and I think overall it's a great looking mouse. I love the shape, weight and performance of the Model D. I got really comfortable with it, and I loved the way it felt and performed, and I was really happy with it. The cable and feet were also pretty good, especially like I said, as far as cables and feet included with the mouse go. Unfortunately the build quality let it down. It is really poor, and the fact that I could just go like this, oh and there we go, it's creaked and clicked again. And there we go, while I was just holding and squeezing this mouse gently in this outro, the PCB has come dislodged again, I'm going to have to take it to pieces. It's absolutely terrible, the build quality, and because of that, I can't recommend this mouse. For $50, I expected better glorious. The mouse, however, isn't too bad if you get it for free, so don't forget to enter the giveaway with the link in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up, and even consider subscribing to the channel. You can look as cool as me with some merch from techify.co.uk slash merch. For your next video, maybe have a look at the Mira S. It's a pretty similar mouse with a semi-ambidextrous shape, and it doesn't have the same build quality issues as the Glorious Model D-. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.